So just to cut to the chase, <laughs> in this video, this is what we're gonna learn right here. And we're also gonna learn about this, and we're gonna learn about this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this. <laughs> and, uh, and when we run this code right here, um, by the way, you can find this code by going to uh, GitHub, goes to 11, learn to code Go version three. All the links will be down below, plus a coupon code for something we're gonna tell you about in a second. But if you come to this repo right here on GitHub and then go to the 000, uh, BRBK go to or zero one string Unicode. You can get to all the code you see in the video, but this is the code. We're going to rewrite this. I'm going to explain it. And we're going to learn about ASCII Unicode UTF-8 and runes. And when you run this code, just so you could see the output of that, I'm going to run this and uh, there's the output. And so that's what we're going to see, right? All this stuff here in this video. So you know what we're going to cover. All right. So first thing I want to tell you about as we get into this is Bill Kennedy. He's my mentor, my friend. <laughs> He's the one who taught me Go. He's amazing with Go. And at the official Go website, there's this Go tour, which you could go through. It's pretty great. But then Bill, since all that code at the official Go tour is open source, Bill took that code and he built upon it and he created the ultimate Go tour. And so this is his perspective and it's a great perspective on working with Go and it's a tour you could go through. We're gonna go through it in a series of videos. The link to the playlist is down below. And this tour will go through, and we're going to go through language mechanics, and we're going to go through composition and interfaces and concurrency and generics, and then also algorithms, because recently I had a student on YouTube uh, say, hey, can you do some videos about algorithms? They're coming, they're coming. Click on the link to the playlist. Maybe they're already there, and you can watch them. Next thing I want you to know is that this Go Tour, the ultimate Go Tour, when you start it, right? There's this welcome one. This is the one we're going to do in this video. So when you click welcome, it's going to open up the ultimate go tour. This is running on an instance, some machine somewhere that if that machine is asleep, it's going to take it a moment to spool up. So if you come here and you click this menu and there's no items populated here, give it a minute, <laughs> literally give it like 30 seconds or a minute and just keep clicking this. And eventually you'll see this populate. And that machine, that means the machine woke up and it's now ready to help you. And now you could run this code and it will run. Otherwise you're going to be waiting for the machine to wake up. So that's the next thing to know. Next thing to know is if you want to take uh, Bill's courses, you could go to training here, click on training. And then there's these self-paced trainings right here and you could click on four individuals and you could come down here and you could click on the ultimate go bundle and you could click on enroll now. And if you click on have a discount coupon and then put in my name, Todd McLeod and hit apply, uh, you're going to get a discount and I'm going to leave that as a surprise for you go, for you to go try out to see what the discount is. Ha ha ha. <laughs> it's kind of fun to have surprises. Go, so go enter my name there and Todd McLeod just like that and then see what kind of discount you get because it's going to change over time and maybe the people who watch the video earlier are going to get a bigger discount than those who watch it later. So go check that out. All right, and then if you wanna take my course, uh, yeah, the link to that is just at the bottom of this repo right here. So just go to the bottom of this GitHub repo, click on the link right there, and it'll take you into that course where uh, you could click on my Go course right there, which is amazing, it's super great. All right, so let's look at this code. So what you need to know about Go is that how, one of the things you have to know is how does it work with strings? And so this is the string right here, and we can put an emoji into it. And if you wanna see how to put an emoji in in Windows, press your start Windows key in a period, it brings up all these emojis, and you can search for emojis. And so there I put an emoji, and there's a the little comment for that. The next thing you need to know is how are characters represented in computers? So in computers are all about circuits and switches, transistors, and various states of on or off. And we could create coding schemes to represent whether or not a circuit or a switch is in an on-off state. And if this is going too fast for you, go check out my class, right? Where I teach the beginning to intermediate level and, and Bill teaches the intermediate to advanced level. So my course will teach you everything I'm showing you right here. So if this is too fast for you, go check out that class. But a circuit or switch in an on-off state, if it's on, it can mean one thing. And if it's off, it, it can mean something else. And if we have many circuits or switches, uh, the arrangement of on or off can mean something, right? The, of the various switches in a certain grouping, a byte can mean something in the different on off states. So the classic example for illustrating this is the porch light on Halloween in America. We have this festival, this holiday called Halloween, where kids dress up in costumes and they go around to their neighbor's houses and they trick or treat where if the porch light is on, if the circuit switches in an on state, and that light's on, it means come trick or treat at this house. And the kids, kids can go up there and ring the doorbell and then the person who lives there will give them candy. If the porch light is off, if the circuit switches in an off state, the encoded meaning for that on Halloween, October 31st in America, means don't come trick or treat at this house, right? These people aren't home, they don't wanna give you candy. <laughs> <laughs> They're grumpy, right? So a circuit or a switch in an on-off state can have different messages 
encoded to it. Those are coding schemes. So originally the most popular coding scheme for English was ASCII, but then that only encoded, since it was only a byte, that only encoded 256 values. And then came along Unicode, which was created incidentally, uh, part, you know, the person who helped create it was Rob Pike, who is one of the creators of the Go programming language. But Unicode was created so that it could encode all the characters in the world, right? So it's up to four bytes. It's variable length encoding. And Unicode will use one to four bytes to encode characters, which encompasses all of the characters in the world. English, right? Including also here, you could see in the welcome, right? Chinese, I think that's Chinese, and plus emojis, because it'll allow for 4.3 billion unique values. So we can associate 4.3 billion different meanings to circuit switches and on-off states, and it's variable length, meaning it'll be one to four bytes. So these are coding schemes. This is how Unicode is encoded in the Go programming language. It's encoded using UTF-8, which allows for variable length encoding of bytes from one to four, so we can encode those. So that's a basis of what uh, coding schemes are. This is the current most popular coding scheme in the world, Unicode, and UTF-8 is used for encoding those from one to four bytes. You can pause the video and you can read about all that. And then each character is referred to as a rune in the Go programming language. So each character is referred to as a rune, and, uh, and you can pause the video and read about what a rune is. And if you want to read a little bit more about what UTF-8 is, here's what ChatGPT had to say about it. So it's pretty good. So you can pause the video and you can read about that right there. All right, so now let's just take a look at how we could work with strings and characters, aka runes, and go. We're going to recreate this code. And when we recreate it, it's going to have this output right here. So let's take a gander at that right now. So I'm going to just comment this out. And then I'm just going to move it down. And then we're going to code our own version of that right here. And I don't know, should it be out of sight or should it be inside? I'll leave it in sight so you can kind of see where we are and where we're going. So the first thing we want to do is we want to range over our string. And when we range over our string, each time we range over our string, we're going to get a rune, right? So each of those is going to be a rune and then we can print out those runes. And so I'll just have a little demarcation between each rune that gets printed out right there. And, uh, and then here I'm gonna print out, for each rune, I'm gonna print out both the value and then I'll put in a tab. And then I'll also print out here, I'm going to print out the value and I'm going to print out the type. I wanna see the type. And so I'm gonna print out each of those runes right there. And then I'll also have a new line after each of these like that. And so now when we run this, I'm gonna clear this and I'm gonna run this one. And when I run that, I see I get the same stuff that we had before, 72 and 32. Well, why, why didn't it, we get to see what the string was, right? It gave us the number and it gave us the type. So this is type N32 and the number is 72. And that brings us back over here because 72 is what H is, right? And I'm looking at the ASCII table, but the ASCII table is the first part of the Unicode coding scheme. And so this translates one-to-one -one ASCII to Unicode, right? So 72 is H. If I wanted to, I could see the string of that and I could do that by selecting each of these. So select that one and select this one and then put parentheses around each of those and then convert them to a string. And now when I print these out, I'm gonna clear this and run this once more. When I print this out, it shows me, right? I've converted that to a string. Now I'm seeing the letter H and this is of type string. So I'm seeing the value and the type. So that's ranging over a string and getting each rune and then seeing the rune either as it's stored, which is as a number, right? Which translates to the coding scheme, Unicode and ASCII is the first part of Unicode. Or we could convert this to a string and when we convert it to a string, uh, we get to see that string H and then we also get to see the type. So with each rune, we can now convert each rune to see how many bytes are there. So we can say how many rune bytes are in each rune. And so we're gonna do a conversion again to a slice of bytes and we're gonna uh, do that with a string of this rune, right? So for that string, uh, convert that string to a slice of bytes. And, uh, and then we're going to range over that, uh, that, that slice of bytes to see that rune bytes to see how many bytes are in each one. So we're gonna get a byte and now I'm gonna range, range over that rune bytes, right? And here I could do a flint print line and again, I'll put a little demarcation here so that we'll see each one. And then I'll also do a font print F. And then here's the big question. It's like, what do I want to see when I range over this? And, uh, and so just to refresh my memory, I wanna see the value and then I wanna see the hexadecimal and then I wanna see the decimal, right? So I'm gonna see the value 
and then do a tab and I want to see the hexadecimal and then do a tab and then I want to see the decimal and we're going to do that uh, for the value I want to see the value on the the rune that we're printing and so the rune is going to be that one right and uh, and then I also want to see here what is the byte and so we have byte and then byte so that's what I want to print out right there and then put a couple of new lines at the end so uh, after each one uh, we've got a new line and I'm just thinking about that for a second to see if everything looks good and that looks good to me. All right, so I'm gonna comment these out right here because we already saw sort of that and now what we're going to do is just take a look at each byte for each character. So this will show us the character and then this will show us the byte, uh, you know, for, for however many bytes are, are there for each, for each character, right? Because we're ranging over each character and then for each character, each rune, we're getting all the bytes, that are, and then we're ranging over that slice of bytes, and we'll see how many bytes are there for each character. That's that's what we're doing. Now I'm going to run, clear this, and then run it. And uh, and when I run it, you could see here, right, the rocket had four bytes, and I want this on the outside, which I had before over there. So I'm going to move that up like that. There we go. And run it once more. So the rocket was made up of four bytes, and you can see those four bytes there as decimal, 240, 159, 154, 128, or hexadecimal, those are the representations in hexadecimal, and then each of these characters here are made up of one byte, right? And those are the numbers for those bytes. So that's pretty cool. It's a really super useful thing to know. That's an introduction to the Ultimate Go Tour and this welcome page here where we talk about characters in Go, and, uh, and then where you could go to see all this code uh, is right there. And that code is all in, well, we'll just look at it right here. That code is all in this folder right there. And then you could take this course if you want to grow your skills. And, uh, and then also if you wanted to, uh, you know, go from the intermediate to advanced level, you know, if you want to go, whatever. If you want to go from beginner to intermediate, take my course. <laughs> and also there's some great stuff that's more intermediate to advanced there. And if you want to go from uh, intermediate to advanced even more deeply, you could go in here, go to training, and then go to the four individuals. All the links are down below. I hope you enjoyed this video. It seemed like there was one other thing I wanted to say, and this was it. It just came back to me. Is I recently was hired to help a Fortune 500 company hire good developers. Two things, actually. Uh, who also had expertise in PHP. They needed to have expertise in Go and PHP. And I was surprised when I helped interview, the, I evaluated people with expertise, I evaluated their Go expertise. I was super surprised to see how many people were saying they knew how to program in Go and they didn't understand fundamentals like everything I just went through right here with you or the difference between like a, a, an array and a slice and how they're related, right? And, um, and so that really surprised me. The vast majority of them, like 90% of them didn't know the differences, know these things like the stuff that you just learned right here. And, um, and so that's the first thing I want to say. The second thing I want to say is uh, I'm transitioning my career. It's a little bit challenging. I stutter a little bit, I guess. That's why. And uh, I'm looking for a position to join a team somewhere as a Go developer. So if you're at an organization and you're looking to bring somebody on <laughs> who has a, a, an amazing set of skills, and it's just a family life situation which occurred over the pandemic. And my, my job as a university college teacher, professor, um, you know, is very much regionally tied. I'm ready to transition into private industry and code. I've always wanted to do that. So my family, we had to re relocate part of the pandemic, part of what happened for our family. Family situation arose. And so now I'm looking to transition my career into private industry and working on a team as a Go developer. So if you know, uh, or if you need somebody to join your organization, reach out, hit me up, and uh, let's, let's talk. <laughs> All right, thanks for tuning in. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up. Uh, if you want to see more videos, uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you'll be notified when they come out. See you in the next videos where we're going to go through uh, the ultimate go tour created by Bill Kennedy. See you in the next videos.